Hey there, everybody. I'm sorry for this introduction. I know it's normally the uh, the, the the weird, freaky, yucky mole guy. I just want to talk about this. Uh, this video was very important, I believe. Uh, it, it is talking about the differences in, in how time works in a language. This sounds like a strange thing, but I'm going to talk about it in the video. In order to explain this properly, we had to first talk about a grammar point where we put a clause in front of toki, and we're going to talk about all of that, don't worry. Then I had to explain how to identify major clauses versus subordinate clauses, so to speak, the main clause, the subordinate clause, all those different terms for clauses that you probably don't know, like the Santa clauses and the Nicolas cages. Anyway, <laughs> that's a dumb joke. And then we actually talk about how time is different. So I, I broke this into three videos because if you actually look at the three videos, they're like all together 40 to 50 minutes long. So instead of sending you down a plop, a 50 minute long lesson, I kind of just assume that most of you don't know all the stuff I'm about to talk about. And I broke it into three lessons again. <sighs> again, the three lessons are going to be talking about identifying clauses and the actual grammar of the actual meaning of this pattern, Toki. And then how to identify which one's the main clause, which one's the subordinate clause. And then we talk about the actual differences between times. So try to watch these three in order. I will put them with the same thumbnail on YouTube. And I hope this helps. Leave a comment. So share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I hit a water bottle. Have a great day. I went to Tokyo. Or oh, sorry, Tokyo. I went to Kyoto. By the way, Kyoto is way more beautiful than Tokyo. Um, if you ever go to Japan and they offer you a job between Tokyo and Kyoto, pick Kyoto. Tokyo is way more gaijin friendly, but it's seedy, it's trashy, it doesn't it looks like a it looks like a machine. I don't know how else to describe it. Kyoto. Beautiful. If you get the option to go to Hokkaido, man, I, I, if I ever move to Japan, it's going to be, I'm, I'm going to try to do everything I can to get to Hokkaido. Anyway, I went to Kyoto. I don't know why I'm doing a girl's voice. But then it's Toki. So, right, I went, to, when I went to Kyoto, sorry, I highlighted Toki and I said the wrong word. When I went to Kyoto, so Ita is past tense, go, go, went. Kono e o kaimashita. I bought a painting. Notice again, we don't have the watashi here. It's just, it's understood. It's understood. We don't need the subject every darn clause. Watashi ga kyoto itta toki. Watashi ga e kono e o kaimashita. You sound like an idiot. Sorry, it's just, it's true. Kyoto itta toki. Kono e o kaimashita. When I, when I went to Kyoto, I bought this picture. So, I don't know. I'm looking at a picture. I'm going to turn this into a picture, uh, uh, a shirt soon. When I went to Kyoto, I bought this picture. Okay. That's what's going on. I'm going to make a joke about, I, I don't know if I should say it, the fisherman's wife painting. Don't look it up if you're under the age of 18. Don't look up, don't look up what I just said. Uh, ooh, I'm going to try to make a joke with that though and make a shirt about it. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is uh, notice past tense, toki, past tense sentence, and really it's the perfective. Okay, okay. So hopefully you understand by this point how toki works, how we're putting clauses behind before it, and it's translated to something like um, and it translates into something like, when I do the first clause, I will then do the second clause or something like that. Really quickly, let's talk about main clauses and subordinate clauses, okay? So here we have the sentence, when I was a kid, I went to Disneyland, okay? So the question is, the question is, um, and, and, and one of my students just got done saying, I don't know English well enough to learn Japanese. And I thought that's exactly it. I think I saw that somewhere else too. Um, a lot of people, especially in America, we, we aren't taught how languages work. And so we're all just kind of like, duh, of course it's that way. That's the way I do speak. And it, it, it it's true that we kind of sound like that when we try to explain languages. And it's fine. We know whatever. Everyone wants to learn English. So we don't really have a problem with that. However, let's talk about this. We have main clauses and we have subordinate clauses and we have all these other different type of clauses, relative clauses, adverbial clauses, adjectival clauses, blah, 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 blah. But we have these different clauses. Look at this sentence, okay? I just want to teach you the idea of a main clause versus a non-main clause. They might use the word subordinate clause. 
okay? We could even say dependent clause and independent clauses. You're gonna hear me say that. Independent clause is a clause that is independent. He don't, he don't need no, he don't need no other clause. Mm -hmm. He don't need no man or she don't need no, I guess, yeah, whatever. She don't need no man. She don't need no other clause. She's independent, mm -hmm. an independent whammon. Uh, the dependent clause is somebody who needs somebody. Don't you need somebody to be a clause for you? That would be your dependent clause. Your main clause is your independent clause and your dependent clause is your subordinate clause, is your not important clause, is your, we're just adding flavor to the main clause, right? The beautiful woman is the main clause. The clothing she wears is the independent, or is the dependent clause, is, is the subordinate clause, you know? You're there for, you know, uh, let's use a non-naughty idea. You know, you, you go to a steakhouse, you get the steak. That's what you want. Just the gravy on top's just, you know, the subordinate clause, the the, the dependent clause. The, the non-main clause is the gravy. The main clause, the independent clause, the the chief idea is the, the meat. Okay, so anyway, I've been yakking on too long. When I was a child, I went to Disneyland, All right? Let's look at the English. When I was a child, I went to Disneyland. Which one of those sentences, which one of those clauses are we actually trying to communicate to somebody? This is how we generally identify the main clause. Are we trying to tell the person, I was a child? Or are we trying to tell the person, I went to Disneyland? I hope you can identify that the main idea of the sentence is that I went to Disneyland and that when I was a child is just the gravy on top of that steak. It's just the, 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 the clothing on the beautiful woman or the, we have the main clause, the independent clause. Then we have the subordinate clause, the dependent clause, the, the, the not main clause over here. Let's make skiaki some other time when meat is inexpensive. So let's just ask ourselves, what one of those two sentences, let's make skiaki, or meat is inexpensive, right? Those are two sentences. I mean, really, they're two clauses, but they're also sentences by themselves. Let's make skiaki, and meat is inexpensive. Okay, so the question is, which one of those is the big daddy? Which one of them is the, is, the, is the steak? Which one of them is the beautiful woman? Which one of them is the independent clause, is, is the main clause? Well, I think what they're trying to say is that they want to make skiaki, and then they're modifying that with the idea of, we'll do it when it's inexpensive, the meat is inexpensive. So that's your, that's your dependent clause, right? Without this, without let's make skiaki, who cares about meat is inexpensive? Does that make sense? All right, toki matukimasu. When I am free, I will come here again, okay? Okay, so which one of those is the important sentence? What are we trying to communicate? If we took out one of those, which one are is more important? When I'm free or such, I'm free! Or I will come here again. Which one of those by themselves is really what we're trying to say? Hopefully you've identified the independent clause is the I will come here. Whereas the dependent clause is I am free, right? When I am free, we could just ignore that. The real sentence is, I'll come here again. Don't worry, buddy. Next one. Please let me know when you are going to play tennis. This one's a bit trickier because the, the dependent clause, the gravy, the beautiful clothing is really important to the meaning of the sentence. But really what we're trying to say is the independent clause. So let's look at this. The sentence is, let me know. And then the other clause is, you will play tennis. When you will play tennis. Hopefully you can see that what they really want you to do, what they really want, what they're really trying to communicate is, let me know. Hey, dude, let me know. Let me know. Let me know. And then what they want you to, what they want you to let them know is not as important as the fact that they want you to let them know. It's when you're gonna play tennis, that's the, that's the thing that they wanna know. But really the important meat and potatoes part is let me know, right? Let me know. I mean, think about this sentence if we took out let me know. When you're gonna play tennis, that doesn't mean anything. Or imagine if we just took off the when. You are going to play tennis. Does that sound like what they're trying to say? No. What they're trying to say is, let me know, right? Let me know. Which one of those is the main sentence or the main clause? Please let me know when you're going to play tennis. Let me know or you're going to play tennis. 
<laughs> clearly this is the meat and potatoes. After you look at it for a little bit, hopefully you can see the let me know as the meat and potatoes. That's the main clause, the oshete kurusai. Okay, Kyoto itta toki, kono e o kaimashita o. I bought this picture when I went to Kyoto. Okay, we have two clauses. I went to Kyoto and we have I bought this picture. Okay, so the question is, uh, which one of those is the meat and potatoes? Uh, is what we're trying to communicate, I bought the picture? Or is what we're trying to communicate, I went to Tokyo? The full sentence is, I bought this picture when I went to Kyoto. Sorry, did I say Tokyo again? I might have got that backwards. I keep doing that in my brain. I bought this picture when I went to Kyoto. I hope you can see that really what they're trying to communicate is not, I went to Kyoto. What they're really trying to communicate is that I bought this picture. But maybe the question was, when did you buy the picture? And I bought it when I went to Kyoto. Hopefully you can see that one of these is a main clause and the ones are sort of gravy on the steak. Or if you're vegan, non-dairy icing on your no egg using cake like object. What's really exciting about Japanese is it's very obvious to find what the main clause is. It's what comes at the end. The, the predicate at the end is your meat and potatoes. Itokoto garimasu, right? I, I have been. I went, right? I went to Disneyland. End of the sentence, I went. Kono niku ga yasui toki skiaki o tsukurimasho, right? The meat and potatoes was let's make skiaki. And look, skiaki o tsukurimasho. That's, that's the last part of the sentence and it is the main clause. Mata kimasu. I, I'll, I'll come again. That was, that was the main clause. Oshite kusai. Let me know. That was the main clause. E o kaimashita. I bought this painting or I bought this picture. So notice how convenient Japanese is. The main clause almost always comes at the end of the sentence. It's very nice. It's very convenient. It's very, it's very helpful. All right. That is how to identify main clauses. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you like, subscribe, and share this video to everybody you know and yell at them repeatedly until they subscribe as well. If you'd like to support me even more, head on over to patreon.com where for just $1 a month, three cents a day, that's it, it's darn near free, you can help me financially keep these videos coming. And as a reward for your Patreon donations, you get access to all of the miscellaneous things that I produce to help out my own students where, who I teach in person and also just things that I make for myself. And if you want a little bit more bang for your buck, head on over to Teespring where you can get lots of fun clothing, mugs, stickers, cell phone cases, all that I've designed. More designs to come. I hope you have yourself a happy dappy day. Peace out.